Well, it's Monday. We're about to go live for Keto on the Couch, and we're going to vlog our day. We are? Yes. Okay, well, let's get started right after this. What's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. That's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Well, Rachel had no idea, but I got the brilliant idea um, when I got home from running some errands and stuff. Of, let's vlog our day. Let's do it. So we're going to do a vlog of our day. Who knows what's going to happen? You never know. Rachel could go in the car and start singing again. It's upside down land. Yeah, right you now. never know what's going to happen with her. But we're going to vlog the day, see how everything goes with the day. But right now, we need to go do the live stream for today's Keto on the Couch. Happy Monday. Good morning. Hey, is everybody doing today? It's sort of afternoon here already. Yeah, I guess, yeah, it's morning or afternoon, depending where you're at, right? For us, it's afternoon. For if you're on the West Coast or anywhere else other than the East Coast, it's still the morning time. I'm still continuing my morning coffee, though. Right. Well, what we well, started to do is we're going to try some eating a little bit different because usually we eat, if we're going to eat more than one meal in a day, we eat a smaller meal in like first, midday yeah. and then a really big meal at night to kind of tide us over till the morning. But it hasn't been working. And so what we said we're going to try now is we're going to eat our big meal in midday, like two o'clock or whatever. And then if we are still hungry at like six or seven o'clock, then we're going to eat again, but it'll be a much smaller meal than what we were normally eating. Well... So much for just relaxing the rest of the afternoon, which is what I usually like to do on a Monday. While we were live streaming Keto on the Couch, one of our customers messaged me and said, like, can you please do me a favor and come cut my lawn this afternoon? My son's got football practice and I really'd like to have it cut for him. Now, granted, this lawn did get cut last Monday when his wife was having a party, but he's a really good customer. He happens to be a friend of ours. And his son does play college ball. So Anthony and I decided to jump in the car, run over, cut his property, and then while we're out, cut a couple of other properties. Only problem is I generally don't like starting work in the middle of the day. I like to get up first thing in the morning and get it over with so that we don't have the heat of the day. Because take a look at this. It is 96 degrees outside. Here's the problem. It's only April. Why is it 96 degrees outside in April? Now, here's the thing. When I first got in the car and while we were driving over here, that was 103 degrees. It's only 96 after sitting in some shade for a little while with the engine running. But this is ridiculously hot for April, even in South Florida. Okay, back from cutting the lawn. You're still going with shipping. I haven't even got to the long boxes yet. There's a lot of shipping. Thank you, Lord, for forbiddenness. Well, it's a little bit later than we wanted to eat. It's like three o'clock. Three forty-two. Is it three? I thought I said three o'clock. To be exact. Are you ready for me to cook something? Am I ready? Burgers, yes. eggs. All of it. Yeah. Anything else? Whatever. Kitchen sink. Throw it in. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do in this one. Start with you. Ten keto foods that we don't like to eat. Number 10, go. Awful. The offals. The, the liver, the kidneys, the brains, the buttholes, all the stuff that's supposed to be like super good for me and giving me like a very specific nutrient and yet, mm, no, awful. Tabitha, the couch is not yours. Sit. That couch does not belong to you. She calls dibs. Tabitha. The couch does not belong to you. It is not your couch. She called dibs. Okay, we're gonna do all of our lunch slash dinner on the Blackstone. For those of you who ask once in a while, this is a Blackstone. It's just a propane griddle. This is the larger size. 
And uh, this doesn't come with it. We actually bought this extra. We got it on Amazon, and it just allows us to cover it up, and we don't have to worry about you know having a soft cover because we use it every day. But we are under a covered roof here, so it stays pretty dry. And now we're just gonna go ahead and turn it on. Okay, so we got the burgers on. We got the eggs. Bacon's over there on the side. Now Rachel likes her eggs cooked really well. We just put this dome right over the top and that'll help the steam cook those eggs. I let mine go a little bit. Now I also have these uncured beef cocktail franks. We picked these up at Whole Foods. I'm going to put some of these on the grill and then when we're done eating, if we still want a little bit more food, we can have some of these. We also have this Kali rice, which uh, came in one of our keto crates. I'm gonna put it on the griddle and just, we're gonna try it. We've never tried this before. It's like a shelf-stable cauliflower rice and uh, gonna make it like a little bit of fried rice, put it on and then maybe put a little bit of butter inside of that. And the last thing we're gonna have is just a little cheese crisp and all we do is take a little bit of shredded cheese. Yeah, don't judge us, we use shredded cheese sometimes and make a little cheese crisp. To do that, all I do is take about a quarter of a cup or so of cheese, spread it out, and we're gonna let it melt and crisp up. Are you ready to eat? Am I ready to eat? Okay, so I showed a little bit of our cooking. Here's a fork and knife for you. Thank you, but I think I'm mostly going to use my chopsticks today. Okay, so here's what we got, although you guys saw it cooking. We've got pretty much the same exact food. So we have the same plate. Three eggs, mine are cooked uh, with an undercooked yolk. Rachel's are overcooked, overcooked. yolk. Uh, we've got the little cheese crisp, which we like to have as our little bit of cheese snack. Sometimes we use regular cheese, sometimes we just use shredded cheese. Shredded cheese is easier to make that little crisp. Three slices of our bacon. We each have a burger. One is that bacon cheddar burger from Sam's Club. The other one is oh, just a regular burger. Uh, but it does have cheese and bacon and stuff like that in there. Then, so this here is this. So we're gonna try this. Cauli rice. Now this one here is just plain rice cauliflower. The one that I made there, that has like mm. broccoli in it as well. Oh wow. Very flavorful. That is really good. That is good. So. We've gotten these a few times in our boxes. Mm -hmm. We've never tried it before. That's actually pretty good. Very nice. So now I added a little bit of Redmond's to it and then just like one tablespoon to uh, of Chef Chamois. Oh yeah. To give it a little bit of flavor and we cooked it on the Blackstone, kind of like fried rice and stuff. And so just to give you an idea. I love that everything is being cooked outside. The entire package, the entire package is a serving. Okay, so we each are eating only a half of serving. Wow. 35 calories, zero grams of fat, two grams of protein, uh, six total carbohydrates, six grams of dietary fiber. So not bad at all. And it's tasty, that's a decent portion. Even I half. think it's perfect. So in addition, this is some of our sauerkraut. This sauerkraut has was made a year ago, so it's gonna taste phenomenal. Mm. So much flavor. That is good. And then, if we're still hungry afterwards, we've got these to pick on. And I've got them cooked up. We're just gonna put them over here. And kind of like the Dr. Sywis thing, like the sequential eating, when you wanna eat something, you gotta reach over and grab it. This is probably all of our food for the day. This is, again, it's like 4.30, so this is our big, big meal. Looks like a lot of food, but calorically, it's honestly not a lot. I'd say 1600 calories or so without like putting everything into a macro calculator. But if we are hungry later on, like at like six o'clock, which I can't imagine seven o'clock, we'll eat a little bit more, maybe a couple more eggs or something like that. Maybe a, a serving of our yogurt, but something small. like that. Yeah, but this is the big meal, but we haven't eaten anything all day. Did we had one cup, of, one cup of coffee a piece or one of our cup of coffees. Right, giant. So, so continuing on, before we get into eating, I am sweating, because I was on the grill, and it's 100 degrees outside. It's Why hot. is it 100 degrees in April? I don't know. Okay, so number nine. I'm gonna take number nine, kale. Like I, you can I eat know, it, I, you don't want to. I just am not a fan of kale. I mean, the only way I wanna eat kale is if I take it and cook it in a whole 
bunch of bacon grease with a bunch of bacon ends where every bite that I spoon into my mouth has bacon. three pieces of bacon and one piece of kale. Like you've washed it down with bacon. And it's to me so much work because to get kale right, you've got to take off the stem and throw out the stem because the stem's almost unedible. I, you know what? I'd rather eat liver. So I know you, your number 10 was the awful. That's I'd a, rather eat the liver. It's a bold statement. Over the, I'd rather eat the liver raw than have the kale. That is specific. Okay, so before we eat, number eight. For me, sardines. <laughs> sardines in a can. I don't want to eat stuff with the faces on. I know that they do have ones, versions where they fillet them. We're going to try those, the ones without the heads and the guts. But the heads and the guts one. No, no thank you. I did forget to mention, because I don't want anybody to say, like, we didn't show everything we ate. Uh-oh. We're also going to have a few of these. Four which front. these things are, oh my gosh, if you have not seen the review for that, I'm going to leave a link for it over my head or over Rachel's head. Stupid hot. These are the stupid hot from Pork and Good, and they are stupidly hot. And stupidly delicious. Now, this bag has four servings. This is the one flavor I think even Rachel is going to say, you will get four servings out of here because you can barely eat a serving without burning your face off. And if you first take a bite and you're like, that's oh, not that hot, wait a second. Yeah, I mean, and they're delicious. So I'm going to have a few of these. Rachel will probably have a few of these. And then also, Alterna Sweets Spicy Ketchup. And Just then eight. of this stuff, which we got in Texas last yes. year. Are you ready? Tabitha. Come on, come on, Tabitha. Come on, come on, come on. So Anthony has decided that she is going to teach Tabitha to swim in the pool. So Anthony, I just want to tell you one thing. When she starts jumping in the pool every single day, you're in charge of drying her and bathing her off. Okay. Tabitha, are you swimming in the pool? You know what the scary part is? We're in the deep end of the pool, and this dog is standing on the bottom. Tabitha, are you standing? What do you have? Huh? Your hair is long, sir. Look how long, how long, how more far down your back does it go? When are you gonna cut that? I'm not. Grayson, do you see what they're doing to your sister out there? They're making her go swimming. Now she's always gonna wanna go in the pool. And what are you doing? Why are you climbing around on the outside of your cage? Do you need food? Maybe you need food. Yes, let's give you some food. Here baby, you want a peanut? I love watching him eat like that. It is so awesome to watch him do that. So this happened. Rachel comes inside and she's like, Joe, I need you to come and look at how to fix this with no judgment, please. I'm feeling a little bit judgy. I'm trying not to be a judgmental person right now too, but Caleb backed out of our driveway. So when we bought the house, I never liked this. There's a fire hydrant next to our driveway. How close to our driveway? That close to our driveway. So Joe put this in. Which everybody made fun of me for putting this thing in. And Caleb says is the problem. However, my police crime unit shows me that that's the fire hydrant. Yes. That is not the yellow thing. That's the fire hydrant too. <laughs> Right, Caleb's like, um... I hit the yellow I thing. I hit the yellow thing. I'm like, no, the yellow thing is plastic and designed to just bang back and forth. You hit the fire, the higher. You hit the fire hydrant. You hit the fire hydrant. Fortunately, I think I can fix it. Okay, all is good in the world. I got the parts because the plastic bumper on the car is completely held on with little plastic push pins. No screws, no bolts. Just a bunch of little plastic push pins. He ripped a bumper off of his car. That's okay. When I'm done with it, you won't even be able to tell that our son ripped the bumper off of the car by backing into a fire hydrant in front of our house. That, oh, by uh, the way, has a big, tall, like, plastic pillar in front of it. So, saying, hey, 
there's a fire hydrant here. I'm kind of having a mom moment right now. <laughs> when I put that little, like, thing on there, you guys all made fun of me for putting that thing there. Well, he passed that thing. He ignored the thing and went right to the fire hydrant. Well, can you imagine if that thing wasn't there? Ugh. Don't worry. I will get it all fixed. Don't worry. All we have to do is get home and do that. So, number seven. Number seven. Number seven should probably be like number one, the thing that I can't stand the most. This is a product. This is the processed food. It's the Love Good Fats Bars. Aww. For someone who loves bars. Those things, I know some people like them, and this isn't a bash on companies. I just don't like them. I don't like the texture. I don't like the taste. And I don't like the ingredients. So before we go home, number six. Runny eggs. <laughs> and again, that's a taste thing. It's just like the bars. Some people love it. Some people are like, runny eggs, yay. Not me. Okay, so we've gone from Rachel singing in the car to all she's doing now is watching videos on giant Brahma chickens. I'm very excited. What is today's date? The 16th? I don't even know. It's the 16th or something like that, right? It's the 20th, isn't it? The next three weeks are going to be a nightmare with her watching chicken videos. We're going to be super educated. <laughs> super educated. Number five. This is going to be another unpopular one. Real Good Foods pizzas. Ooh, yeah. Listen. This isn't, this isn't a surprise to anybody that's watched our channel, though. Here's the thing. We've had the breakfast sandwiches. They're not bad. They actually taste pretty good. I think they're expensive, but they taste pretty good. I think the enchiladas were okay. But the pizzas, we've tried every flavor. I don't like any of their pizzas. To top it off, they're expensive. And the carb count is really high. But again, not it's not knocking them as a company. I just personally don't like them, even though I know a lot of people do. Well, good as new. I'm actually kind of impressed. You should be. I'm pretty good at this kind of stuff. Wow, and you got rid of the evidence of what he hit. Yeah. Now it's your word against his, memory. The only thing that, I mean, this is the best I can do. The bumper actually bent this whole piece. So you can see a little tiny crease now. Uh, and then also, in pulling off the bumper, he pulled off the license plate, like, wire that lights up the license plate, which then disconnected somewhere, ripped the wire for the driver's side taillights. So when has, we do something, we do it 100%. So now he has no taillight on that side. So what I'll have to do is, instead of trying to find where he ripped the wire, I'll just run a new wire, but I have to order the wire. Do you hear Tabitha? Barking like a crazy dog that's been trapped outside for millions of years. She's been out for like five minutes. That's because it's 420 and the kids behind us oh. are all smoking pot. So she's barking at them all. Mm. She's like, make good choices. <laughs> so how much is Caleb in our debt now? Because I figured this would have cost about 750 bucks to go to an auto repair shop. It's not the money. It's the fact that we were just like, no big deal, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Like, don't don't freak out. Don't feel like a bad person. Like, we handled- the, We handled this well. The issue well. In a quarantine setting, which I feel like we could have popped the top off of our lid. I will say this. When I was just starting driving, my dad drove a Suburban. I don't know if my sister remembers this. My dad drove a Suburban. We pulled into the gas station and the gas stations, I think most gas stations still have them, like the poles, the concrete poles on the end of the gas stations so that, you know, you don't take out a gas pump. Right. Well, he drove a Suburban. And so I was making the right hand turn pulling out and cut it too, like quickly. Right. And that pole took out the entire side of his car. Was he chill? Mm, my dad was pretty okay with it. I mean, he wasn't happy, but I feel like we handled it almost as well as my dad did. Yeah. I so I, I'm, I'm proud of us. Me too. Because old Joe 
would have killed my son first, then told him I'm sorry for killing him. Especially if we were running on carbs and you happen to be hangry. If you got us at the intersection <sighs> of, you know, parenting, hangry, quarantine, like, it's a perfect storm. Yeah. Number, I think it's four, berries. I I'm just going to go right to berries. I hate to say that, but like, I'm just not a berry person. I like an occasional blueberry muffin with the berries in that setting, but I feel like I'm kind of not of popular opinion that I'm okay with no berries, no raspberries, no strawberries, no blueberries. I really don't miss them and it's not my favorite thing. And I feel like every single time I get a berry, I, I have it in my mind how plump and juicy and sweet it's gonna taste. And it's always like not great. Now again, we just want to reiterate this one more time. Just us. This is not a list of, these are foods that you shouldn't eat. No. This is a list of not our keto favorites. foods that a lot of people like that we personally don't and like. And maybe someplace else where like berries are super growing naturally in your backyard, it's like a very different thing. Yeah, I mean, hey, fresh blueberries. I mean, when I was a kid, we used to go blueberry picking for the wild blueberries they when we would go like camping. don't like I remember anymore. Yeah, but again, I just want to make sure everybody yes. understand, this is not a list of don't eat these foods. No. This is foods that we personally don't like. Now, along with that, this is very upsetting to see. Yes. So this is a mango tree that is only three years old. And when we got it, it was a stick. And look at all of these mangoes that are on here that'll be ripe and we can't eat them. However, you will notice at the base of our mango tree are all of these rocks. And they are gratitude rocks. On those rocks are things that we are thankful for. And every single time I can think of something, we put it on the rock and leave it here. That's awesome. Because a lot of times I will look at this mango tree and focus on what I cannot have and what I want. And you I'm, mean the mangoes that are right next to your head? Right, exactly. And I'm not gonna cut down this tree because I can't have it, obviously. But I want to make sure at the at the root system of things that, you know, yeah, I can't have this but there's a lot of things that I'm not dealing with anymore. And inflammation is on a rock and Joe walking is on a rock. There's a lot of things on a rock. So number three. Number three, Atkins bars. Dude, you ate a ton of those when we started. Yeah, so when we first started keto, I ate a lot of Atkins bar, mostly because that's what was available. I also didn't know what the heck I was doing. I wasn't even eating enough calories when I first started. And when I first started on keto, we had a bunch of hurricanes that year. So I was buying up Atkins bars whenever they were buy one, get one free as like, you know, emergency food. Because this was pre knowing about keto chow. There was no keto brick. There were no really shelf stable foods that you could get like bars or anything like that. The only bar around was actually the keto bar, the original keto bar. So I ate a lot of them, but now I've tried to have one here and there because they would come in a keto crate and I just don't like them. I they don't like the texture. Exactly the same to me. Yeah, they all have the same flavor. They all have like that rice crispy, whatever they're using to give that texture inside of it. I just don't like them, especially now, you know, because keto is so popular, there are so many really good keto friendly bars, like the perfect keto bars or the original keto bar or- Keto fit. Keto Fit Bar. So yeah, I don't like Atkins, Atkins bars at all. Oh, let's finish this thing up because it's been one of those days. <laughs> it's been a good day. We found out we're getting chickens. We found out we're getting chickens. We had, I think, a really good keto on the couch. Sorry that keto on the couch has been going a little long, but like we said, like we're just enjoying talking to everybody. Sorry, not sorry. So like I somehow our one hour live streams are turning into close to two hours, but I'm I just really love enjoying hanging out it. with everybody. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And we love all you guys. We love talking to you guys. Seriously. We also never want to miss a comment. So we try to get through as many comments as possible. But yeah, I mean, I was definitely not expecting to have to go cut a lawn because like I said, when we're going to cut, Anthony and I want to get up and work our way into the heat of the day. I don't want to walk out to my car and see 100 degrees and start cutting lawn. It's just like, I don't handle that well. So here's the thing. I'm on my like 10th one of these today. Wow. I don't normally drink that much, but I'm thirsty, so I drink. And we also, well, yesterday we had a lot of sodium because we had barbecue. I 
like cover the ribs in a bunch of salt when I cook them. So that makes you want to have some more water and it helps flush out all of that that we're retaining. Which we definitely need to. We definitely need to do that. So we have two left. Um, I think we're done for the day eating, by the way. I, I'm honestly yeah. not hungry. It's 8 o'clock, and I'm pretty good. I feel good, and Maybe, I'm not going to push it. Yeah. I mean, if anything, if I was going to have anything, it would be a cup of our yogurt, and I would have it right now, but I'm honestly not hungry, so... I'd probably have a fried egg. You want an egg? I could make an egg if you want. Maybe an egg. Maybe We'll, we'll have another egg or two. Maybe that, that's a good idea. Yeah. So, But we're, gonna, we're not going to show that, but we are going to finish this up. So we have two left. So your turn. Number two. Man, my, this one is going to be just as unpopular as the berries, I'm afraid. But oh I'm just going to say it. Chaffle. What? I am not. Say it. A, I can't hear you. Say, should I say it loud and proud? You should. Chaffles. I'm not a huge chaffle fan. You love chaffles. Joe could have a chaffle all the time. I'm just not a chaffle person. Yeah. I mean, I like them. I don't need them every day. But once in a while... I think they are a great carrier. If you're trying to really avoid any kind of keto bread, and we've talked about breads and stuff enough, uh, but if you really just want that carrier, I think chaffles are awesome. Now I'll tell you what I do like about them. I really like having one that's a little bit on the sweeter side. Instead of it being like a bread for a sandwich, mm -hmm. I like it made as like almost like replacing an ice cream cone. So yes. we'll have keto chow ice cream, and then I'll have a chaffle that's kind of a sweeter chaffle as like the cup. I just thought of, you know, instead of an egg, we still have three keto chows from our keto chow challenge that we haven't ha drank. Why don't we turn one of those into a keto chow ice cream and split that as a okay. dessert for tonight? All right. That would be like 200 calories a piece. It's not like overdoing our food and going to bed Pound full. It. Yes. And they're made out of butter. So yeah. we'll just make one of those split it. into an ice cream and we'll split it. And that's what we're going to finish our day with. I like Better that. Better than an egg? Yes. I think that's what we're going to do. Um, yeah. So back to chaffles. I like them. The biggest problem with chaffles is you can easily consume way too much dairy. So we do, we're not anti-dairy people. We do no. cheese almost every day. We have a little piece of cheese, but if you're eating a bunch of chaffles, you could easily end up eating four, five, six ounces of cheese a day. Okay, but here's the thing. And there's a carb in an ounce of cheese. Well, and I'm fine with it. My thing is, I like, because they're mostly egg and cheese. That's what they are, egg okay. and cheese. So I like eggs. And I like cheese. And you just want them separate. And I want them separate. But you know, I'm that type of person that deconstructs whatever it is that I eat. If yeah. I, you know, am eating, I want to say like when we turn a sub into a salad, I'm still eating she pulls just apart. the meat, just the lettuce, just, I mean, Well, she's the olives. you're even worse than that though. You actually take, if I get you, so for example, if we go to Las Patas or even if we go to like Wawa mm -hmm. and we get a salad, a sub turned into a salad. And I'll usually get one that has multiple meats, like the Italian. That's the right. one we really like to get because Italians are usually a little bit fattier. It's got salami and pepperoni and stuff like that. Got some spice to it sometimes. So, you know, they'll put like ham, pepperoni, salami. Rachel takes it apart, whereas me, I'm grabbing just like the chunk of meat. She's separating salami. Here's a piece of salami. Here's a piece of ham. So she does. If I make a burger, like sometimes we'll try to like duplicate the burger from Tucker Dukes, the Mondragon, where I'll do a burger with egg and cheese and bacon and I'll pile it all and I'm cutting it with a knife. Rachel's pulling it apart. Like I want a piece of cheese. I want a piece of bacon. That's just how you so, are. So maybe that's my thing with it. If okay. I get a, if I get a hamburger, I pulled the hamburger elements apart. Yeah. So. Okay, so number one. You get the honor of number one. I think you're going to agree with this one. I don't know. N number one is a tough one, but this is one that I don't think either one of us like at all, and I think most people love it. Okay. Brie cheese. Oh, yeah. I am a cheese snob. I love cheese. If you open up our refrigerator right now, there's at least, and no exaggeration, at least... 15 different types yeah, of cheese. Whenever I they're on sale, we buy them. Do not have the taste for brie cheese. It's like snotty. It it, it tastes like, like it's it. gone bad. I just don't like brie cheese. I don't like the texture. I don't like the taste. We've tried I don't like the smell. We've tried it in every different it. way. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't work. Don't, You're right. Brie I don't cheese. like brie cheese. So. Well, that is <laughs> our 10 things that are keto foods that we personally don't like. Well, I hate ending on a negative. 
Okay. So on a positive, since at the top of our list was a cheese, mm -hmm. what is a cheese you absolutely love? Oh, that's easy. For me, Swiss cheese. Swiss which cheese. Which is one of the best cheeses you can eat. I, lo I like a lot of cheeses, but I love Swiss cheese. Love Swiss cheese. I'm going to go with, right now, because it changes every time I taste yeah. a different cheese. I'm going to go with good old-fashioned sharp cheddar. Sharp cheddar has never failed me yet. Okay. Sharp cheddar. Well, let us know down in the comments section, what are some of the foods that are keto... But you don't like them. But you personally don't like them. And it's okay to not you like You know another them. one that I am I will eat, but I'm not a huge fan of? Okay. Avocado. I love avocado. You so know, I can... split. I'm... You, you only know, like guacamole. I like guacamole. But avocado not. is one of those things that I kind of force myself to eat because it is healthy for you. There's a lot of healthy aspects to it. But I'm just not a big fan of the mushy texture. And even guacamole is only a recent acquired taste. But let us know down in the comment section, what are some of the different keto foods that you personally don't like? And also, let us know what your favorite cheese is, I if like, you eat cheese. I like avocado anywhere. I like it on a boat. I like it on a goat. I like it on a bus. <laughs> that is our video for today. Please do us a favor, hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. That way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Hopefully the next one, we won't have a ripped off bumper by our son. Mm. <laughs> Till next time. Bye. Bye.